I'm trying to make a specialty of helping people who are chronically sick and tired. Most of the lab, most of the time, the lab work doesn't tell you much of anything. Um, I thought I would kind of take you down the garden path of kind of my thought process as I'm working with someone. Tired. T. Toxins. I. Infections. R. Rest or lack thereof and or stress. Um, e. Endocrine system. Hormonal things. Lack of exercise. E. And D. Diet. We'll save the best for last. <laughs> toxins. Um, I didn't think too much about toxins. That's actually our wobbly box out there. Um, my mom calls it the wobbly box. That's our lamb, Bobby. There's a long story as to why Bobby has Bobby's name, but anyway. Um, when um, there's a tornado and it dings the house and you let the water run in and you go, okay, I'll get around to fixing it. And the water in the bathtub has a hole in it and you just tape it and you go, okay, I'll get around to fixing it. And then um, we had one third of the, the bathroom on the other side sprung a leak enough that we had to rip it all out and the whole thing was black with black mold. Okay, we took it all out, fixed it, thought it was done. And nope. Um, I went to a conference in January um, of this year, and it was about mold toxins, and I went, oh, that's very interesting. Well, you kind of know that mold is bad. You don't know mold is bad. I mean, bad. It can do so many different things to you, and uh, so I said, okay, well, maybe that's why I'm tired enough to think about retiring, and maybe that's why I'm coughing for two hours every night for a year, and I can't get rid of it. And there, we did a, there is actually a urine test for the mold toxins, and it came out positive for the black mold. Uh, and so um, my husband, I said, well, what do we do now? He says, well, why don't we go sleep in the other house and see if you're, you get better? Three days in the other house, I felt like a totally different person. Mm -hmm. I went, oh my gosh. Okay, well, we have proceeded to work on building a new house, and that house is sort of the laundry room and not much else. Um, <laughs> This is mold growing. No, that's not my house. That's, <laughs> that's an electric the electron micrograph of, to, uh, of uh, mold spores. Um, there, there is so much, um, uh, and the mold's really hard to get rid of because the toxin keeps circulating. Well, that's true of a lot of the different toxins. The Mad Hatter, the Hatters in the 1800s really were mad because of inorganic mercury. They were using mercury to make felt out of small fur animals to make their hats. Um, the Roman Empire actually collapsed partly because of lead in the pipes. Um, and I'm kind of looking at what's going to be our demise because we have so many toxins in our environment and in our world. Where is it? What is? What about the stuff you can't see? You know, it's invading our water supply. It's invading our food. It's invading our environment. It's invading the air. Um, and what I say is, you have to do as much as you can to control these toxins. Bring down the toxic load so your body can handle some of this. Um, chemical fragrances. You cannot believe what they put in Tide detergent. Uh, creams that you put on your skin, mm -hmm. stuff they spray in the smelly stuff. Mm -hmm. It's incredible, heavy duty, toxic, mega toxic chemical stuff. Mm -hmm. Chloride and fluoride you would think would be not so bad, but I think that's one of the main reasons why thyroid, why one 10% of women in this country have a thyroid problem. Mm -hmm. um, because fluoride binds and interferes with iodine, uh, chloride does too, and bromine of all things. Bromine is the brominated um, flour. Anything that's white flour has bromine in it. And those three things just wreak havoc with your thyroid. Mm. Oxygen, um, CO2 in the air, stale air. We're sealing our houses more and more and more and we got this stale air. Mm. 
And some of you guys are smoking still, really? <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, the, what I have learned in what they've got in construction materials in the process of building our house has been phenomenal. The formaldehyde and solute, solvents and PCBs, and these are all things that we're picking up. I mean, I read a study where they did cord blood analysis on toxins on babies. You know, the brand new baby, cord blood. Over 200 toxins in babies in cord blood. Um, household cleaners. Look at what you're using. You don't need all that stuff. You need some, you know, maybe some uh, borax or maybe a little sodium bicarb or a little, I mean, simple stuff. You don't need all that junk. Mercury in your fillings. The whole thing about fish, um, mercury is kind of a little bit different than the inorganic mercury. There's some uh, controversy on all of that, but it's still a worry. Uh, mold, mm -hmm. pesticides, come on, just leave the fire ants alone. They'll be fine. If you really want to get rid of the fire ants, take a uh, take oranges, squeeze out the orange juice and drink it, and take the orange peels and stick them through a blender and make a slurry out of it and then pour it on the hand heels. They don't like it. Truly. <laughs> Plastics. You know, we're trying to get healthy and drink water, and um, we're drinking them in these plastic bottles. Come on. Get yourself a, you know, a water filter. Anyway, get rid of as much toxins in your world as possible. Yes. They're all additive. Every single one of them. Um, I've been, I've kind of learned how to do it. The problem is the toxins have no way of getting out. Your liver absorbs it, puts it in the gallbladder, throws it in the gut. Your gut sort of says, oh, that's food. That must be good. Absorb it back. The liver goes, ends up back in the uh, liver, goes back into the gut, goes back into the liver, goes back, in, you know, there's a loop here. You can't, you've got to get it out, otherwise the loop never goes away. And so things like uh, N-acetylcysteine and uh, glutathione um, will actually help the liver detox from this. Vitamin C actually works sort of like glutathione eventually. And then you take charcoal and clay. Sounds weird. Charcoal and clay to bind it up and get it out. Um, Colocyramine is actually a prescription that's been used, but that's kind of for real bad toxic things. <coughs> infections. The list of infections is phenomenal. Lyme disease I put on the top of the list because it's something that I've dealt with for years and years and years. I've, been, I've had chronic Lyme for 30 years. Um, I got it when I was in medical school, bit by a tick my first year, and was pregnant at the time, and ended up with a brain damaged son because of it. So, um, and didn't have a diagnosis for 20 years. Um, something chewed up his brain, nobody knew what. Um, and, um, it, it, and then, it, you know, it's not recognized, then you spend 10 years kind of going downhill until you start getting treatment for it. By then, it's like tertiary syphilis. It's back in your brain and it stays and hangs around forever. Uh, mycoplasma. Smokers have terrible arthritis problems because they got chronic infections with mycoplasma. And these mycoplasmas get into your joints and get into crevices and cracks and things and start and your body can't get to it or they try to get to it, in, you know, if you've got a, a, a cell and then it's got a little marker on it that says, oh, I've got an infection over here and your body says, ooh, foreign object, attack. Well, it starts attacking you, trying to get rid of the infection and this attack on you makes you feel tired, you know, oh, you can't go anywhere. Um, H. pylori is really not enough good bugs in your gut and too many bad bugs in your gut. 90% of ulcers are an infection in your gut. And it's something that the GI guys just can't register in their heads. It's an infection, but it has to do with being out of balance and all these other things. Chronic bronchitis, well, if you've got a thick soup from allergies in here, you're carrying around a chronic infection. You don't feel good. Um, yeast. Yeast is a real big problem in our world when we eat so much <clears throat> uh, 
pasta and bread and um, sweetened tea and you know all those things. Um, and then the yeast get hold and it really is back to the gut not having enough um, uh, good bacteria to out out compete the yeast. Um, parasites are starting to become a problem. The problem is the stool tests are really not very good for them. They miss all of them. So, you know, is it a parasite somewhere? Um, chronic strep infections in, in Europe, they, if you get strep, you get treated for a year because they're so afraid of scarlet fever and rheumatic fever and all those things. Here we give a five day Z-pack and say, oh, it's done. Well, maybe it's not done. Um, and then there's all these people walking around with the resistant staph infections. Then there's that whole other, you know, superbug issue um, that your body's trying to beat, beat down. Um, you could be feeling totally out of sorts, not knowing why, because of an infection, like feeling upside down. <laughs> How do you figure out where the problem is? You keep it up until you get better and don't give up. That's really the key. You don't give up. Would you tell me, please, which way I ought to go from here? That depends a good deal on where you want to get to, said the cat. I don't much care where, said Alice. Then it doesn't much matter which way you go, said the cat. So long as I get somewhere, Alice said, as an explanation. Oh, you're sure to do that, said the cat, if you only walk long enough. <laughs> This is a very long list. Please don't even try to read it. Um, you know how you get a little tonsillitis and your whole body feels bad? It's one little tonsil, but everything aches, your body hurts. Most people know there's something wrong. You can't figure out why when you've got some sort of chronic infection. And you could, you could have just about anything. Well, this same list is gluten sensitivity. Uh, sim the symptoms of gluten sensitivity could it look exactly the same way. Or toxic exposure. Or nutritional deficiencies. So your body's telling you something's wrong and it's not telling you where to look. Um, what could it be? Dr. Mark Houston is a really incredible researcher, uh, written tons of books, and I was listening to him a couple of days on the Gluten Summit on this web webinar thing. He says, the blood vessel has an infinite number of insults, but only three finite responses to the insult. And these three finite responses are inflammation, oxidative stress, and vascular autoimmune dysfunction. The blood vessels inside have an endothelial laborer that have to work properly. They have to let the right stuff in and let the right stuff out or it doesn't work properly. That's where you start to get the heart disease and the body falling apart and everything. He says 70% or more of patients with dyslipidemias, problems with their cholesterol, have the abnormal lipids due to infection, bad micronutrient intake, including gluten, and toxins. 70% of people who have crazy cholesterols are because of something else. Um, it could be a sign of infection. Your body uh, makes these lipoproteins, and these lipoproteins try to encapsulate um, whatever's the problem agent. And your LDLs could go up, your HDLs could go up, or could go down, your HDLs could begin not to work. You have to remove the insult to get the cholesterols normal. Um, uh, he says that this lipidemia is a normal response to the invading insult, whatever this insult is, except in the genetic form of cholesterol problems. So beating down the cholesterol for the sake of beating down the cholesterol doesn't do you anything. You have to find out what's causing it and fix that. We're going to switch to number, or letter R, rest. We are so in a hurry all the time. Have you ever asked yourself why? Yeah. Yeah. Nor did Alice think it so very much out of the way to hear the rabbit say to itself, oh dear, oh dear, I shall be late. <laughs> well, 
we're not getting rest because first of all, we wake up tired in the morning. The first thing we do is get this cup of caffeine that's going to flog our adrenals and bring some life to those eyeballs. And then you can't go to sleep because you're worried. And then you go back in the morning and flog yourself with that caffeine again. All the financial pressures. Our world is, is rough. Um, the social connection. We, you know, we didn't used to be like this. We didn't used to be isolated. And, you know, 50% or more now are single parents with kids or grandparents raising their grandchildren. But they're isolated units. They're not working together on this. We're all set apart. So you feel isolated, and that connection is what feeds our spirit, and our soul. Um, Think of the movies that we're seeing. My gosh, is that restful? <laughs> um, when you get into this loss of social interaction, you start getting depressed, and then you start thinking about the, the loss, whatever that loss was, and it just eats you up over years and years. Uh, my herbalist teacher called that stagnant depression. You're stuck in this low spot. Uh, anger, fear, uh, withdrawal are all unhealthy responses to the stress. Again, back to the, you know, step up, where's the, the social connection, the family, the support, the people that are going to help us through it. And then you can't sleep because of a number of different things. Um, things that interfere with sleep or sleep apnea. If you need a CPAP guy, wear it! Um, restless legs, or better yet, solve what's causing this sleep apnea. But anyway. Um, sleep will do so much to us. We used to sleep nine and ten hours a night hundred years ago. Uh, with the light bulb, we cut it down to eight, and now we're at six and a half or seven, maybe. That's just not enough. You know, you need to set aside eight hours of sleep minimum. And then there's all the electromagnetic stuff that agitates our world. Uh, computers, cell towers, cell phones, buzzing things. In a hurry getting nowhere fast? Well, in our country, said Alice, still panting a little, you'd generally get to somewhere else if you ran very fast for a long time, as we're doing. A slow sort of country, said the queen. Now here, you see, it takes all the running you can do to keep in the same place. If you want to get somewhere else, you must run at least twice as fast. <laughs> How about running a little slower? <laughs> what happens in a power outage? <laughs> Tell me what happens in a power outage. <laughs> More babies are born nine months later, yes. <laughs> <laughs> there was, uh, I don't know, two or three months ago, uh, the power went out. There wasn't a storm. It just went out for about an hour and a half. Quiet. Quiet was just heavenly. The humidifier, the dehumidifier wasn't working. The air conditioner wasn't buzzing. The light wasn't on. The, the TV wasn't going. The Turn the power off just to rest. You'd be amazed what it'll do for you, how you feel. Um, the appliances and uh, just, you know, rest. We need it occasionally. Get away from your toxic friends <laughs> that turn you upside down into the sugar bowl. <laughs> we need more social time and storytelling time. We, it really feeds our spirit and our soul. Women's Power Lunch! <laughs> Endocrine. That's what most people think of when you think of being tired. Gee, my thyroid must be out. Well, you notice we got through a whole lot before we got to thyroid. Um, it's, yes, important, but it's not by any means everything. Um, and the whole endocrine system has to talk to each other. The pituitary has to talk to the thyroid, has to talk to the adrenals, has to talk to the pancreas. Um, otherwise
otherwise it doesn't work properly. Um, insulin resistance, by the time you start gaining weight, and adding belly fat, and heading on your way towards diabetes, that insulin messes up the whole endocrine system. So then it feeds on the being tired kind of cycle. The estrogen and progesterone balances uh, make a big difference. If you're spending, you know, all night long, you know, micro sweating, then you're not sleeping and you're waking up every night, then you need to get the hormones in balance so that you can sleep, so that you can start attacking the rest of your issues. Low testosterone, even in girls, um, it's a problem. Um, adrenal fatigue, we're so wore out that our adrenals are beat down. The medical profession doesn't really recognize it as, you know, your adrenals are either totally okay or totally dead, but nothing in between. I think there's a whole lot of in between. And as an example, you can't make the thyroid work properly if your adrenals are totally zapped out. Mm -hmm. So what do you do then? Um, I made a, I, you're, ex thank you, um, I uh, was, this was my final project for my herbal medicine course, and I made this little board game to help learn adaptogens. We don't have it in Western medicine. Adaptogens are herbs that help your adrenals do what they're supposed to do. There's a whole list of them. I'm sure you've heard some of them. Ginseng, astragalus, cordyceps, um, eleutherococcus. Um, the athletes in, um, uh, like the Olympic athletes from Russia take eleutherococcus to build themselves up. The Chinese take cordyceps to build themselves up to deal with the stress of the training and things. Um, these are wonderful herbs. I've used quite a bit of cordyceps lately. It's a mushroom that actually helps the immune system kind of step down when your body's all flared up with arthritic stuff and also helps the adrenals and um, work with the thyroid and all those things. Um, stress will go down with exercise. You know, get up and move. Come on, everybody up! <laughs> I, up, up! Jump up and down, stretch! <laughs> All right. <laughs> you don't have to do anything magical to get some exercise. Turn the TV on to some dance show and go dance in front of the TV and wiggle and wiggle and whatever. It's amazing what you can do. Just do that for five minutes straight. You'll feel your heart pumping and heart racing, and you can do it stark naked, you know? Nobody's watching. Huh? Yoga, yes. Um, Mark Houston, Dr. Houston um, said he did a study where he took a bunch of hypertensive patients and he put them on, for one year, a simple diet, which we'll discuss. No grains, no dairy, lots of exercise, fiber, no tobacco, no alcohol, restrict caffeine. Gee, that sounds familiar. 62% of those patients were able to get off all of their blood pressure medicine. So you can do a lot with lifestyle. And then why are we stuck? Inside, cold outside, and that's so pretty out there. <laughs> that's my house. <laughs> Take the dogs for a walk in the sunshine. My oh, gosh, those are the oh, monsters oh, over there. Oh, 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 um, remember what he said, Dr. He Mark Houston said the blood vessel and basically all the metabolic processes inside your body have a finite, it can, can be assaulted with an infinite number of insults, but they're only going to do three things. They're going to get inflammation, they're going to have oxidative stress, and the endothelial lining is not going to work right. And the metabolic stuff isn't going to work right. So the treatment for all these things we have been talking about is more or less the same, right? Because they're all, your body has all these assaults, and it's only going to do one of a few things. So therefore, we have to help those things so that we can get better.
D, diet. I feel bad, what did I eat? I tell people over and over and over again, what did you eat? Poor nutrition, not enough vegetables and fruits, too many fast foods and frozen foods, lack of proper exercise. Dr. Houston says that you can get rid of 70% of all diseases with proper exercise and nutrition. Very simple stuff. <clears throat> fats are not bad for you. Bad fats are bad for you. The good fats are olive oil, coconut oil, palm oil, avocado oil, macadamia nut oil, grass-fed beef and lamb, uh, wild caught fish, real butter, uh, nuts and seeds. Um, there's only three foods. It's either a fat or a protein or a carb. You can't eat more than about 30% of your calories as protein because your body goes nuts off. So, if you eat low fat, then by definition you eat high carb, which then drives the insulin resistance, which then drives your endocrine system to not work right, which then starts all these other crazy inflammatory oxidative things going on inside your body. You need fat. Low fat is not good for you. There was, uh, in 2008, was a really big study that the medical people are really ignoring. It was in the New England Journal of Medicine. They took 300 some odd people and put them head to head. Low carb, Mediterranean, low fat diet. You know which one won? Which one won? Mediterranean. No, the high fat, low carb diet. Not the Mediterranean diet because it still had enough carbs in it. Um, low carbers had the greatest weight loss, they had better fasting insulins, their triglycerides went down, their C-reactive protein, which is an indicator of inflammatory stuff, then went down. The low carb diet won. We've been hunter-gatherers for thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years. Um, the, we were genetically raised to be hunter-gatherers. Um, our genetics has allowed us to survive high-fat, low-carb environments. Eskimos, they eat 80% of their calories as fat, and they don't get heart disease until they start eating McDonald's and French fries. <laughs> um, and it's not because of the fat, it's because of the carb. Um, the caffeine is really a vicious cycle, and you have you can't rest your body if you're flogging it with caffeine. So I've told people just if you really want to lose weight, if you really want to feel better, get rid of the caffeine. It'll take you a while to come off of it, but it really isn't that beneficial for you. Simple sugars, carbs, get rid of them. You don't need the dinner roll. You don't need the pastas. You need a piece of steak and salad, um, breakfast, scrambled eggs and bacon and sausage. Doesn't that sound good? <laughs> when, when was the last time your doctor said, eat bacon? <laughs> um, nutritional deficiencies are a real problem. We've got to add that back to with real food. You know, they talk about really good nutrition-dense foods. The best nutrition-dense foods are meat. In fact, do you know what meat has the most vitamins and minerals and stuff in it? Anybody got a guess? Liver. Oh. <laughs> Liver. So if you're really depleted, go get some grass-fed beef liver. Oh, or free-range chicken liver. Amazing what will happen. Uh, food allergies and sensitivities. If you're eating stuff that makes you feel bad, how are you going to stop all this runaway inflammatory stuff in your body that's interfering with digestion and interfering with absorption and interfering with metabolism? You're going to feel tired because it's not working right. Um, I don't believe that anybody can eat vegetarian and uh, 
<laughs> properly get enough nutrition. Um, I just, you just can't. Especially when I tell you you really ought not, not to eat gluten. It's amazing how much junk food you can eat vegetarian. Um, chronic dieting is a real problem. You're losing weight, gaining it back, losing weight, gaining it back. Of course, your metabolism ratchets down, so then the next time it's harder, and this vicious cycle is no good. Um, and then the medications that we're all taking interfere with everything. The heart medicines are terrible wasters of beet complex and uh, CoQ10 and all, all these things. And so you have to build your body up so you can get off that stuff. We want to eat at Disneyland and not pay the price on our bodies. You can't eat at Disneyland day after day after day. Guess what's coming up for <laughs> in about, no, let's see, what, 10 days or something? Turkey Day. Um, you can actually have a really wonderful turkey day and do well with it. You know, turkey and skin is 300 calories, green beans are 110, cranberry sauce is nothing, pickles and olives are not much of nothing, that's 460 calories. Well, uh, now let's add the butter and the roll and the stuffing and the sweet potatoes and uh, all of a sudden you got 2,000 calories, a lot of which is carbs. <laughs> now, you can make yourself, you know, healthier if you double your serving of turkey to 12 ounces and you double that green bean stuff, you're 870 calories. Okay, okay, half a piece of pie. You're still around 1,000 calories, not over 2,000. Okay? Um, wheat now represents about 20% of all calories ingested in the entire world. Okay? It's pure carb that we cannot digest. There is a whole lot of new research coming out now that basically says Gluten is totally indigestible for most of us. Um, I've worked with this for a long time, trying to help the really big folks lose weight and just get other health, uh, other people that aren't so big get healthier. And at least a third of people have to stop eating gluten to lose weight. It just flat doesn't work. The sunshine. God. We need to get up, get some sunshine. Vitamin D were, is a severe deficiency in our world um, in Texas because the only time you make vitamin D is between March and September, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. What are Texans doing between March and September, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m.? Uh, Hiding! <laughs> Which means you're not getting any sun. White folks, very common to have teens and early 20s in terms of vitamin D levels. Black folks, I've seen fours. I mean, you have no vitamin D, tens. Um, and you add some vitamin D and it does so much to your health. I'm on the vitamin D uh, rampage since about five or six years ago. Um, I started recommending vitamin D and I started recommending a thousand units a day. Okay, a thousand units a day. After about a year, the levels just didn't do anything. So then I said, okay, that's not enough. So I upped it to 2,000 uh, uh, 2, calories, uh, 2,000 units a day. And after about a year, there was some difference. There's still a lot of 20s. Still couldn't even get up to 30 with that. So I said, and then Metagenics came out with a 5,000 unit a day pill, and I said, oh good, that's what we're going to recommend, 5,000 units a day, everybody, diabetics, thyroid people, every, high blood pressure, everybody. <laughs> Six months later, the hospital comes over and says, are you mad at us? I said, no, why? They said, well, your hospital admissions are down by two-thirds. I had done nothing else to the practice except recommend vitamin D to anybody who would listen to me. This is what I've heard consistently across the country as I've went to conferences. Vitamin D is the most important vitamin for your health. Heart attacks, strokes, infections, pneumonias, everything go down.
um, vitamin D3, not D2, vitamin D3. With A and K. With A and K. <laughs> Don't let the rain come into your house. You gotta have build a really strong house with really good nutritional building blocks. And that's a work in progress. <laughs> uh, so, it's up to you. If you want to fix it, or you just want to band-aid it. I love this t-shirt. I take an aspirin for the headache caused by the Zyrtec, which I take for my hay fever because I got from the Relenza, which was da 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 You get the idea. Basically, it's, it says down here at the bottom something that good diet, exercise, and, and regular chiropractic care <laughs> would, would take care of. Because I'm just too tired to do that. Tired is really dare it in order of importance. Let food be thy medicine, and medicine be thy food. Good old Hippocrates. <laughs> Questions? <laughs>